Okay, so as a portrait photographer, I often take portraits, of course. And uh, in those portraits, I often deal with a common issue, and that is redness of skin in areas that's a little distracting. Like, for example, these giant Dumbo ears I have, they might be a little too red, and that would be distracting. And let's say I sometimes have a little red patch here, and everyone's a little different. Somebody who's blown their nose, maybe their nose is a little red, sort of distracting redness of skin that takes away from the portrait. So how do you adjust redness in certain areas of the skin or the portrait without removing it from, let's say, the lips or the cheeks? Well, it's a tip that I use in Photoshop that I use almost in every portrait that has this type of issue. It's super simple. I wanted to share it with you guys, so that's what this video is all about. So the answer to that is coming right up. Hey everyone, this is Mike here from Mike McGee Photography. Okay, this is the tip that I use all the time. I use it in my portraits. It's a very simple Photoshop tip to remove selective redness from skin tones. Uh, oftentimes that's like a red nose, red ears, uh, maybe a little bit redness of the forehead, but you don't want to kill the redness of like the lips or the rosy cheeks that may gives a portrait life. So how exactly do you do it? Well, I thought it'd be good if I just punch up, let's say, my, I'm gonna use my old man glasses here, and uh, don't mind me, but I can't see. So uh, here's a screenshot, or the, these are the images of a um, shoot I did with a client named Lucas, who's from Australia, awesome dude. Uh, we did some, uh, some shots for his modeling portfolio. I'm just gonna blaze through these really quickly. Um, but we also did some headshots, and when we were in my studio, let me get to the, just scroll through some of these shots. The headshots that we did in studio, we did with my ring light. Here we go. And I don't know if you can notice, but once it was sort of like a high contrast, sort of low key look with the ring light, you could see a lot of overly red, or the redness of his ears sort of stood out as opposed to some of the other uh, lighting scenarios that we did. So redness of the bridge of his nose, a little bit in his forehead, definitely in the ears, and even a little bit in the neck. Um, those are areas that I thought were distracting. So here are some edited versions. So this was like sort of a before, and then I even did like a black and white version just to kind of give it a different vibe. But um, you know, let me try to, here's another black and white version of a headshot. So let me just pick one. I'm gonna find one that has sort of like a very red. See, there's there's one that's pretty good. You can kind of see, let's, well, let's try, well, I think, yeah, let's try this one. How about it's a little brighter? Um, now, this one in particular, you could see his ear is just, to me, it's just distractingly red. He has a little bit of redness in the bridge of his nose, and there's some slight redness in the forehead, but that's kind of gives it a natural look, so that's okay. Um, but there is a little bit of redness in the bottom of his chin as well. So let's say we wanted to correct that, all right? I'm going to go ahead and go into Photoshop. So I'm going to fire this guy up. We're going to go into Photoshop. Wait till Photoshop boots up. And then once we're in Photoshop, the key is to create a special hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna do this very slowly so you guys can see what I'm doing. We're gonna go down to the hue and saturation adjustment layer here. And we're just, I'm gonna let that go. And I have it set up to where my properties are above and I have my layers on the bottom. I just like that because you get sort of detailed access without using up a ton of real estate of the screen. I mean, I can even move this over a little bit. I could zoom in a little bit more. Maybe you can see a little better because you could really see how that ear right here is a little too red. But again, we don't want to kill the redness of either the cheeks or the lips because that gives a portrait life. So how exactly do we do this? Well, the key is a very simple technique is that we want to adjust just the redness. But how do we isolate the reddest part of the image? Well, we're going to go to the reds. And we're actually going to bump this up all the way, or we can just move the slider up to 100. So once we see that, we're like, whoa, he looks like a hot tamale, and that is showing tons of redness. However, that's showing just red that's throughout the entire image. But how do we selectively focus on just the reddest parts of this particular portrait? Well, that is using this little area right down here, and this is just the slider that we're going to bring back towards the reddest areas of the image. And as I bring this back, you can see it starts focusing in on the reddest parts of the image. And sure enough, my eyes were not deceiving me. His ear is definitely blazing red. The center part of his nose is completely red, forehead as well as some neck. So if I let this go, now 
what's going to happen is any adjustments we make, they're really not going to affect his hair, his, his beard area. They're just going to affect these parts that are highlighted, but we obviously don't want it at 100%. So we're going to move this back down to zero. Again, you can move the slider. I could have slid this little slider down to zero. But now any adjustments we make are just going to adjust the reddest parts of the image. So if I, I'm gonna just fool around with this slider right here and really show you. So if I really tweak this, you can see just the reddest parts of the image are now being adjusted. You see what I'm saying? So, wow, now it looks like he has poison oak all over, but what we really wanna do is make this a more natural adjustment to reduce the red, but not make it look unnatural. So I've found a good number is between six and 11, something like that is a common baseline that I usually just mentally default to. And then, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put this at like eight. Let's put this at eight on the slider. I'm gonna hit return and now, you can see, let's just focus on his ears. Forget the lips for a second. His ears look far more natural over here in this area. His nose definitely looks more natural. Um, it did take away a little bit of the, the redness on his forehead, which I kind of actually liked. Definitely redness of the cheeks are gone and the lips are a little flat and dead. So again, how do we adjust this for just those areas? Well, what I typically do is I just click on the mask. This is the layer mask right here. I click on this mask. I go to the, I usually hit command I, I'm on a Mac, but it's an adjustment invert is what it's saying. So right now, if I hit command I, or if you're on a PC, if you hit uh, your version of command I, which is what, I don't know, control I, I'm guessing. Uh, so let's hit invert. And so now this is going to invert. So it's basically putting, let's say a black sheet of, of plexiglass on top that's opaque. And now no adjustments have been made. So all we now have to do is sort of scrape away that layer, that mask, and then that will expose the areas we want to adjust. So I usually then go to a brush right here and I'll pick a very large brush. I have it at like 600 and I'm normally using a Wacom tablet, but right now I'm just using a mouse. So you can use the brackets left or right to sort of adjust that brush. Um, on your keyboard. So I'm gonna adjust the brush to about here and I'm gonna have it on the absolute softest brush that we can get because we want that to be natural. We don't want like a hard line of the difference in color. And so all we're gonna do now is we're just going to have that at 100%, 100% flow and we're just gonna brush in his ear. And you can see right as I do this, I hope the YouTube algorithm will allow you to see it if it's not too compressed for your video, but that redness of his ear is now gone. Now let's try, I don't like this redness in the bridge of his nose, so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of hit that a little bit. Now that's gone. I'm gonna reduce the size of this brush, again, using the left bracket on the keyboard, just to kind of fine tune. There might be a little bit of redness right by his eye. You can do a little bit of this, but see, I like to keep the redness of the cheeks and redness of the lips, because if you study the face, you want that redness oftentimes for makeup, let's say you, people put like rosy cheeks and put lipstick or something like that. That's because it's a very uh, natural element to have those redness there still. Now the neck, I'm gonna scroll down here for just a little bit and on the neck, I am gonna adjust this and let's say we wanted to not do a complete wipe out of this. Well, you have an option. You could do, let's say, the opacity of the brush is let's say 20%. And now if I go over here, I'm adjusting the mask and I'm just gonna I'm not gonna be precise at all. I'm just gonna kinda go back once or twice. And now if, you, if I do an option click on this mask right here, you can see that it's not officially 100% gone, like anything white means we've adjusted it. Well now it's sort of a light gray. So that means we've made an adjustment, but it's a subtle adjustment, a little bit more, because I think the forehead and the neck area can be adjusted, but I don't want it 100% adjusted. So I'm gonna go ahead and click back on that element of the mask and I'm just going to go ahead, click on the mask and I'll again kind of have it at 20%, just adjust a tiny bit of red here or here, but that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to bring that redness down to an acceptable level that looks far more balanced and natural. Now if I just hide that, you could see that's sort of the before and that's the after. It might look a little too greenish a little bit in some areas. And again, if you think that's the case, all you have to do is click on that adjustment right here, go to the reds and just toggle this number. The lower the number, the more it goes back to the baseline original. So if you had it at zero, then you haven't made any adjustments. If you bring it all the way up to like something crazy like this, now you have a green nose, all right? Now it's a little Shrekish. 
But if you just bring it down to about eh, seven, eight, six, something like that, I think that's kind of a balance. Eh, I might even go down to six, you know, just a tiny little tweak so it isn't so red. So that's pretty much it. Now I'm just gonna flatten this image, go ahead and hit save. We'll go back into Lightroom and then that's when I usually make my adjustments for any kind of, um, you know, other adjustments that are not Photoshop related. Uh, let me go ahead and click off this. We'll go back into Lightroom. And if you see here, now we have the before. Let me zoom in a little bit. Have some before and again, kind of focus on his ear maybe because that's the most egregious reddish area of the, of the image and after. And when you go before and after, you can see the bridge of his nose. You can kind of make an adjustment here. Sort of the bridge of his nose and then back and forth. So you got before and after. And that's just all I do to create more balance and select, remove selective redness in my portrait. All right, so there you have it. There is a simple, absolutely simple trick to selectively remove redness from certain areas of the skin when doing portraits. Uh, I use it all the time, as I mentioned, and uh, it's one of those tips that I probably have a core group of about three or four Photoshop tips that I just use all the time. And I'm sure there's channels that do Photoshop tips much better than I do, like Flurn and all the rest of them. But that is one that's highly specific to portrait photography that I use all the time. And you may or may not run into that issue as well. So it's just a tip that I wanted to share with everybody. So uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer any questions. And uh, feel free to subscribe if you like this and want to see any other tips and tricks, so to speak. And uh, thanks for watching.